Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 64. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. It's hard to believe that we're now on part 64 of this series. And in fact, we've actually done a, a few more than that because beforehand I just called it something else before calling it Bitcoin to be mathematics. But here we are, you know, more than five years into this series. And after all this time, you know, starting it way back over here, we're still not that far removed from what you would ultimately consider the quote unquote fair value to be. Now, as of November 2025, total crypto market caps coming in at around 3.682 trillion. Where the fair value logarithmic regression line, fair value logarithmic regression trend line is coming in at around 4.6 trillion. One of the interesting things is that like this entire, you know, this entire monstrous bull market that Bitcoin's been in for a long time is, you know, we have these periods of undervaluation and overvaluation. And this cycle has been mostly just kind of like riding that fair value line. And you could argue that the fair value line is essentially when bitcoin is stealing the shell like when we're we're kind of at the fair value when bitcoin is taking more of that liquidity and you know when the frothier stuff comes up that's when you see these cycles where they go more overvalued but we haven't really seen that this cycle and you know you could base it on any number of things you could base it on uh monetary policy obviously quantitative tightening and high interest rates so the qt uh, is coming to an end in about a month um, you could base it on inflation, you could base it on people just getting tired of getting rug pulled on various meme coins, and so they just stick to Bitcoin. I don't really care what you base it on, but I mean, at the end of the day, this entire asset class has been essentially right at the fair value for the last several years. In May of 2022, you can see that the total market cap of crypto was right around a little less than $1 trillion, which is right around where that fair value was. And today, Again, the fair value is around 4.6, and we're about 3.6 or so. I mean, it's not going to be a perfect fit, obviously, but it does go to show that um, you know, it has worked out pretty well. And, and really, this is more evidence of how similar it's been to that 2019 phase where you had, you know, you had a bull market, but it really never went more durably overvalued. It was just sort of going just above the fair value and then coming right back down. Just that this cycle, we did it a couple of times, <laughs> maybe even almost three, three times of, of seeing that play out. If you actually take the percent difference between the total cryptocurrency market cap and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, you get a chart that looks like this. And you can see that red line. That's what represents the fair value. And you can see that like every time we get above it, it just sell, it just sells off. And we've seen that in prior cycles, right? Like it's not like we haven't seen that before. It's just that typically at some point it would go more overvalued. And we just haven't really seen that. Right, we haven't really seen that yet. Um, now, who knows? I mean, there's still theoretically time. I would argue, though, that the time is is running out for this cycle. I mean, if you do believe in the four year cycle, then we're essentially looking at, you know, no more than a couple of months. Obviously, a lot can happen in a couple of months. So, you know, who am I to to say it can't? But it it's been a really interesting cycle because. We haven't really had any like major parabolic rallies for Bitcoin. I mean, we obviously had some nice rallies, but we haven't had any rallies that, you know, really got the euphoria moving, right? And, you know, that's kind of something that that has been different this cycle than in prior cycles. And and you can actually see that if you go look at, at one of those indicators we've looked at before, the social interest, right? The social interest for crypto remains relatively low, Um so, you know, and, and, and this entire move over here has just been sort of a, a more steady move, right? You move up, you establish a floor. You move up, you establish a floor. It's kind of just been like that all in, over and over and over again. Whereas in the 2020 cycle and the 2017 cycle, it was much more of a parabolic rally that really got people talking. And so because of that, we haven't really seen retail come back in the way that a lot of people thought they might. But again, this is all in line with that quantitative tightening approach we said back in 2019, you know, that comparison back to 2019. Retail didn't come back then either. You know, it it it, it took changes in monetary policy. It took a lot of changes for, for things to ultimately turn back the other way. So, you know, ultimately, my goal for this asset class is to eventually go 
to 10 trillion, hopefully in a couple of cycles or so, uh, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends.